everyone. Thank you very much, Stavrula. Can you hear and see me? Yes, yes. Perfect. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dionysis Stavakopoulos. Um, I teach Byzantine history at the University of Cyprus. And it is sincerely my very great pleasure to introduce our next author, who is no other than a great host, of course, uh, Petros Buras Valianatos. Um, I think we can all agree that this book festival has already been and it continues to be a very rewarding event. And I would like to thank Petros for coming up with the idea and for organizing it so flawlessly. But today I'm here to present another of his achievements, his first monograph. Um, Petros Buras Valianatos is welcome lecturer in history of medicine at the University of Edinburgh. We all know that by now. He's also the principal investigator of a five year welcome um, <clears throat> funded project, uh, making and consuming drugs in the Italian and Byzantine worlds from the 12th to the 15th century. In the short time that has elapsed between his uh, PhD in 2015 and today, Petros has already produced an impressive body of work. And I will mention here his three edited, co-edited volumes, Greek medical literature and its readers from Hippocrates to Islam and Byzantium, published by Routledge in 2018. His um, volume, Brill's Companion to the Reception of Galen, published in, by Brill in 2019, and <clears throat> excuse me, Exploring Greek Manuscripts in the Library at the Welcome Collection in London, published by Routledge in 2020. I should also like to single out that he produced the first descriptive catalog of the Greek manuscripts at the Welcome Library, something very, very useful. And of course, numerous articles and chapters in edited volumes on the history of medicine and pharmacology in the medieval Mediterranean. And there is, of course, much to come as his, for example, edition of a number of medieval Greek recipe books um, and an important article on Zulapia, the Byzantine versions of Arabic sugar-based medicinal potions that will appear in Speculum, I think, quite soon. But today, as I said, I would like to focus on his monograph, Innovation in Byzantine Medicine, the writings of John Zacharias Actuarios, circa 1275 to circa 1330, which was published by Oxford University Press in 2020. Since I was Petrus's doctor father, which makes me particularly proud of presenting the book today. I thought I'd begin by sharing an anecdote about the origins of the doctoral thesis of which this book is a very much revised and supplemented uh, version. Petros already back then wanted to work on John, but there was an eminent Byzantinist who had produced some preliminary work on John Zacharias and in 1983 had announced the imminent publication of a critical edition of this author's um, longest work, The Medical Epitome. So what to do? We discussed, we debated this issue. And I'm very glad that in the end, we agreed that Petros should pursue the research he so wanted to. And the rest is history, as they say. Um, by the way, just to mention that the aforementioned edition has not materialized yet. A few words on the author. I am sure it's no shame to um, admit that perhaps even for many of us as, as, as Byzantinists, the author might not be quite familiar. So John Zacharias Actuarius, or perhaps better, the Actuario, since this was um, a, at an office he occupied, was a Byzantine intellectual, a practicing physician, and a medical author, whose florid is roughly the first quarter of the 14th century. He has left us three key works on urines, the medical epitome, and on psychic pneuma, all three still lacking a critical edition. So in this context here, um, may 
scholars perhaps uh, be inspired to uh, go down that path. And I think we can all agree that Byzantine medicine has, or the study of Byzantine uh, medicine has never attracted a significant scholarly attention, mostly because it was pejoratively considered a niche interest, derivative, unoriginal. It's only worth being a quarry for extracting otherwise lost textual gems from the Greco-Roman tradition. But I think that this approach is on its way out, no doubt as the result of the work of scholars like Petros. The book, as you can see, and I will try to share my screen. I hope it'll work. Um, I just have the table of contents here for you, um, just to give you uh, an idea. As you can see, um, the book engages in different chapters with each of the works of, of John and um, does so by offering close readings that reveal, I think, quite unexpected and rich findings along the way. And the question, of course, we probably all have to ask ourselves about all our books is, so what? Why did John's work deserve to be rescued from obscurity and scrutinized in the way that Petros has done in this work, namely by placing it in multiple contexts, that of its contemporary Paleologan intellectual revival, that of the reception of the Greco-Roman medical tradition, and that of course of the reception of contemporary, contemporary to the author. I mean, um, uh, works produced both in the Islamic world and in the Western reception and elaboration of these um, Islamic medical uh, traditions and innovations. I would prefer to ask Petros to answer this question. And so I give the screen um, to him right now with many thanks. Thank you, Dionysi. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so thank you so much, Yonisi, for your very generous introduction, and uh, thanks, uh, many thanks to all of you who have joined this session. So the idea about um, uh, writing John Zacharias Actuarios um, came to me when back in 2009, I was reading an article on Byzantine medicine by the prominent uh, medical historian can you see the next slide? Uh, medical historian Ose Temkin, published in 1962 in the Barton Oaks Papers. I quote, Byzantine medicine reaches its climax with John Actuarius. John knows uh, that he has something to say. Yet I hesitate to include him in my discussion. John knows that uh, he has, um, excuse me, as far as I know, even the necessary philological preparation for such a task has not yet been made. I was attracted by the notion of contributing to something uh, undoubtedly very important, but which had not been previously been um, examined in any detail. On the other hand, in view of the very poor uh, early 19th century editions, um, the lack of any translations in a modern language and the fact that the Greek text of his major work, Medical Epitome, was um, uh, mostly unpublished. I was skeptical of my chances of finding a way of tackling the project. Shortly after that, um, I remember I met with Dionysios um, at the Cafe St. Parker Station during a short visit to London when, while I was undertaking my master's at Oxford. And Dionysios was the first person uh, to support my idea and he subsequently proved to be an excellent uh, doctoral supervisor. Um, I would like also to, to thank um, Ludmila Jordanova, Georgi Parpulov, and Peregrine Horden um, 
for uh, the encouragement they gave me crucial um, um, uh, moments on this project. Now, perhaps one of the greatest uh, challenges in this project was consulting a large number of manuscripts in order to be able to establish a working text for John's unpublished work. And another challenge was the often uh, abstruse and highly rhetorical language uh, of John, especially in his uh, introductions and uh, conclusions of, of, of his works. So what is the main name of my monograph? My book represents a substantial part of a project I have uh, had in mind since my postgraduate studies, which involves putting the Byzantine medical tradition on equal terms with the Latin and Islamic medical tradition in the study of the medieval Mediterranean uh, world. So in this respect, it seeks to um, erode prejudices that uh, label Byzantine medical literature as fossilized or stagnant and regard it as having made no significant contribution to the history of medicine, apart from the preservation and transmission of ancient Greek medical knowledge. For example, um, some esteemed senior colleagues in the history of medicine have in the past stated that medical thought in the Byzantine world had no truly new features or that Byzantine medical authors are the refrigerators of antiquity. If you want to use a kitchen appliance to describe the work of medical authors in Byzantium, it should be the food mixer, not the fridge. And in fact, Byzantine medical authors did often collect area knowledge in the format of a single volume, but they give a new twist to ancient Hippocratic and Galenic theories in line with contemporary needs. And this is certainly true for early Byzantine medical authors such as Orivasios, Aetius of Amida, Paul of Aegina. Nevertheless, the case of John Zacharias Actuarius is quite different and certainly much more interesting. So uh, who was John? He was born, as also already um, Dionysius said, at around 1275. He was a well-educated practicing physician in Constantinople and a prominent member of the early Paleologan intellectual elite. He frequented the high social um, and scholarly circles, being in contact with prominent individuals, including Theodor Metochitis and Alexios Apokavkos, and in close communication and correspondence with Joseph Rakenditis or the philosopher, George Lacapinos and Michael Gavras. His status as a well-established and successful physician received recognition from Emperor Andronicos II, who appointed him to the office of Actuarios, the highest honorific title awarded to physicians in late Byzantium. So John wrote three works, a Euroscopic treatise, the so-called on urines in seven books, which is by far the longest medieval uh, work on this subject, including all medieval traditions, Islamic, Latin, uh, Jewish, a long medical handbook dealing with all aspects of medicine, the so-called medical epitome in six books, and the specialized work on physiology in two books, the so-called uh, on psychic human. So in assessing John's corpus, I deal with each of his works in individual chapters, following a general to specific approach, providing background details uh, to help the reader better understand the more specialized discussions on uh, the later sections of, of my chapters. And this is a significant aim uh, that I had in mind when uh, I was writing my dissertation and then uh, uh, drafting uh, my book, not only to appeal to medical historians, but also to Byzantines in general. So my book aims also to motivate scholars of Byzantine history and literature to make use of evidence from medical literature in the study and wider evaluation of Byzantine society and culture. 
So let me now very briefly uh, present some of John's uh, contributions. So in contrast to the highly developed modern microscopic techniques, ancient medieval medical practitioners could only examine uh, urine samples macroscopically. Various features of the urine from color to sediment were scrutinized by physicians in an attempt to diagnose and prognosticate uh, the patient's clinical condition. John was the first to give a description of a large number of urinary characteristics and connect them with certain medical conditions. What makes his work uh, so interesting is that he often, his narration, uh, he often elaborates um, his theory with uh, case histories involving real patients from his clinical experience. These stories uh, have a dual function as uh, a didactic tool and also as an instrument of self-promotion. Perhaps the most uh, innovative aspect of John's work is the introduction of a new urine vial divided into 11 areas and his theory about the connection of each area with a certain part of the human body. The work circulated extensively in the centuries following his death. It was translated into Latin in the 16th century and numbered many editions. It was cited by university professors in Italy, Germany, and France, and became so popular that it's even found in 16th century English vernacular texts, which were aimed at a broad medical audience. His longest work uh, is known as Medical Epitome, or the Metodo Medenti in Latin. In my book, I argued that it was written for the contemporary Philiatros Alexios Apokavkos, and by extension, um, also available to other friends of medicine or amateur physicians who were deeply interested in medicine, allowing them to carry it with them on their travels and treat themselves uh, or others. This work shows um, a significant degree of openness to knowledge from outside Byzantium, especially in the field of pharmacology, thus presenting a unique amalgamation of early Greek and Byzantine sources with recently introduced uh, Arabic pharmacological lore, an excellent example of medieval scientific uh, knowledge transfer. What makes the work uh, quite original is that John did not only adopt earlier recipes, but he introduced his own as an outcome of his rich pra practical experience uh, which, uh, uh, of what he called Pera, Pera. Finally, John was also a pioneer in the field of physiology and dietetics. In his work on psychic pneuma, which is dedicated to Joseph Rakenvitis, he considered the psychic pneuma a vehicle and first instrument of the soul. Consequently, the purified state of this pneuma achieved through an appropriate regimen was essential uh, to keeping Joseph's bodily and spiritual health in good condition. John's efforts to classify a large number of foodstuffs and the way he connects the role of exercise, sleep, and bathing with uh, keeping the psychic pneuma and the health of the soul in good condition are exceptional, and this allowed him to offer comprehensive uh, advice on the most appropriate psychotherapeutic regimen uh, taking certain peculiarities of the time into consideration, including the extensive practice of fasting throughout the year, an important aspect of the Orthodox faith. So I hope I have explained why it is important to finally overturn the derogatory view that Byzantine medical works were merely compilations of earlier material, and why we should also start thinking about how some medical developments could help us better understand Byzantine culture and society. Thank you.